Hello, my name is Jonathan Harris from Worldwide Camera Exchange. A very quick video today to help you identify which model Leica screw camera you may have. Introduced roughly 1925, made all the way through until uh, the late 1950s. It can be a little bit difficult to distinguish between the various models. I'm not going to discuss every model, I'm not going to discuss every variant, just the ones you're most likely to come across. If you are interested in the uh, in the rarer cameras, in, in, the, in the, the more unusual sub-variants, then um, then get hold of this book, the, the Hove photo book. Uh, this is the seventh edition. I think it went to the eighth edition before it is discontinued. Um, it covers all the screw cameras. It covers the vast majority of the M cameras. Certainly, certainly worth getting hold of one of the one of the editions if you can. If it's the the earlier equipment that interests you. Any of, the, any of the editions will, will be fine. The later seventh and eighth editions only cover the later M6 cameras and the later lenses and some of the more unusual um, limited edition M6 cameras, uh, some of which are photographs taken by me about 30 years ago. So it's, it's worth a look, it's, it's, a, it's an interesting book. Okay, so Leica screw cameras. First introduced, uh, 1923, 1924, 1925, the Leica One. This is the, um, this is the first, this is the first camera. Leica One comes in two variants. There's the fixed lens and the interchangeable lens. If the camera has this little hockey stick here, that's actually the infinity lock for the lens. The lens is fixed. This is by far the most unusual camera. This camera is actually quite rare. The later versions of this, you won't see the hockey stick. They took it off because the lenses were interchangeable. The last of the Leica One cameras were known as the Leica Standards, and they're actually relatively common um, in Leica terms. The Leica Standards have an interchangeable lens and are chrome. The key thing about the Leica One is that it only has a viewfinder. There's only a viewfinder here. So that's the rewind, that's the wind on crank shutter speed dial and the shutter release, that's just the viewfinder, there's no range finder. If your camera has a range finder, then it isn't a Leica 1. What you have is either a Leica 2 or a Leica 3. This is a Leica 2. The Leica 2 is distinguished from the Leica 1 in that it has a range finder, you can see there. You've got the range finder mechanism on the top, slightly raised, with the rangefinder windows there. Now this was produced from about 1932. Um, the Leica II was subsequently replaced by the Leica III. Now, if your camera has a slow speed dial, the slow speed dial is this additional dial on the front just here, then it's a Leica III. Looking on the top, you have the standard shutter speed dial, which all the cameras have. That goes from about a 25th or a 30th of a second up to the top speed. But with the Leica 3, they introduced the slow speed. So this dial is a second a secondary mechanism, which runs from a 25th all the way down to one second. So if your camera has a rangefinder and has a slow speed dial, then you have a Leica 3. Now, this is a Leica 3. The highest shutter speed is one five hundredth of a second. If your shutter goes up to a thousandth of a second, you have a 3A. Now, look at the back. The Leica 3A has a rangefinder and a viewfinder window on the back. You look through one set of focusing, you look through the other to actually compose the photograph. You'll see on the Leica 3A, this is a 3A, those windows are a little bit way apart, apart, probably 20 mil apart. That makes it a 3A. If you have a 3B, have a look at the back. These two windows will be close together. I'll show you the two, the two together. So there's the 3A on the top. The eyepieces are um, a fair distance apart. On the 3B, the eyepieces are close together. Now the 3B, was replaced by the 3C. The 3C was the first of the cameras to have a one-piece top plate. So you'll see on this camera, on the 3B, the rangefinder assembly at the top there is separate from the actual um, 
top plate of the camera. So they 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 screw they screw the rangefinder assembly onto the top plate of the camera. If this is all molded, if it's all one piece, then you've got a Leica 3 C. Now the Leica 3 C was the last of the um, the wartime cameras, and the Leica 3 C is probably the most common camera. So if you see one of these in chrome and it's got a one piece top plate, the chances are it's a Leica 3 C. Now. We are now moving into post-war cameras. The Leica 3C was replaced by the Leica 3F. The Leica 3F is actually very easy to spot because if you look around the shutter speed dial, you'll see an additional dial, uh, which is actually used to set the flash synchronization. So if the camera has a dial around the shutter speed dial, then you've got yourself a 3F. The 3F was replaced in turn by the 3G, the 3G again is very easy to spot because it was the first of the cameras with the bright line frames in the viewfinder. So if you look through the camera and you can see a bright line frame for a 50 millimeter lens, you've got a 3G. That was the last of the Leica cameras discontinued in the late 1950s, early 1960s. The 3G was discontinued when the Leica 3 M3 came out, which was the first of the bayonet fitting cameras. Obviously, the, all of the cameras we're talking about here now are the Leica screw cameras. They have a Leica, they have a Leica, a Leica screw lens that comes off like that. I hope that's useful. If you have any questions, please stick them in the, um, in the boxes below. I always, get, I always reply if I can. Uh, otherwise, please subscribe and like, and I hope to see you again soon. Thank you. Bye-bye.